Section 10 of the Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Lion and the Gnat. Away with you, vile insect, said a lion angrily to a gnat that was buzzing around his head. But the gnat was not in the least disturbed. Do you think, he said spitefully to the lion, that I am afraid of you because they call you king? The next instant he flew at the lion and stung him sharply on the nose. Mad with rage, the lion struck fiercely at the gnat, but only succeeded in tearing himself with his claws. Again and again the gnat stung the lion, who now was roaring terribly. At last, worn out with rage and covered with wounds that his own teeth and claws had made, the lion gave up the fight. The gnat buzzed away to tell the whole world about his victory, but instead he flew straight into a spider's web. And there, he who had defeated the king of beasts came to a miserable end, the prey of a little spider. The least of our enemies is often the most to be feared. Pride over a success should not throw us off our guard. The Leap at Rhodes a certain man who visited foreign lands could talk of little when he returned to his home except the wonderful adventures he had met with and the great deeds he had done abroad. One of the feats he told about was a leap he made in a city called Rhodes. That leap was so great, he said, that no other man could leap anywhere near the distance. A great many persons in Rhodes had seen him do it and would prove that what he told was true. No need of witnesses, said one of the hearers. Suppose this city is Rhodes. Now show us how far you can jump. Deeds count, not boasting words. The Cock and the Jewel The cock was busily scratching and scraping about to find something to eat for himself and his family, when he happened to turn up a precious jewel that had been lost by its owner. Aha, said the cock, no doubt you are very costly, and he who lost you would give a great deal to find you. But as for me, I would choose a single grain of barley corn before all the jewels in the world. Precious things are without value to those who cannot prize them. The Monkey and the Camel At a great celebration in honor of King Lion, the monkey was asked to dance for the company. His dancing was very clever indeed, and the animals were all highly pleased with his grace and lightness. The praise that was showered on the monkey made the camel envious. He was very sure that he could dance quite as well as the monkey, if not better. So he pushed his way into the crowd that was gathered around the monkey, and rising on his hind legs, began to dance. But the big hulking camel made himself very ridiculous as he kicked out his knotty legs and twisted his long, clumsy neck. Besides, the animals found it hard to keep their toes from under his heavy hoofs. At last, when one of his huge feet came within an inch of King Lion's nose, the animals were so disgusted that they set upon the camel in a rage and drove him out into the desert. Shortly afterward, refreshments, consisting mostly of camel's hump and ribs, were served to the company. Do not try to ape your betters. End of section 10. Recording by Terry Torres.